Welcome to King Lizard's Game Lounge and Forza Motorsport 7 Rivals action. So today I'm going to do two Bounty Hunter events from Valentine's. These were the events where you had to beat Alan Hartman, who's the manager of Turn 10 Studios. He set two times, one in the 2017 Ford GT and one in the 1966 number 2 Ford GT40 Mark II Le Mans. So first of these events is at Daytona International Speedway and this is the sports car circuit the next one is going to be at Le Mans so basically I'm going to race my guts out see how I can do against this guy's time and also against the community's time and you know try and get the best place possible. really now this car is by far this 2017 Ford GT is by far an easy car to drive. I actually find this quite tough. I found it very tough in Forza Motorsport Term um, 6, which is obviously where it was the flagship car. And I'm finding it pretty tough in this game. To be honest, this is the very first time I've stepped into the 2017 Ford GT in Forza Motorsport 7. So it's a bit of a new experience for me at the moment. Obviously I'm on lap six here. This is my sixth run my first attempt at trying to reel in this record i've had quite a few dirty laps at this point i keep making the odd mistake the first lap i forgot about this section and actually went straight into the uh, tire wall there because i was you know, just lost concentration for a few seconds I forgot which variant of um, daytona it was so this is i'll be honest not particularly one of my favorite tracks so I wasn't expecting to get particularly great time here, but obviously I've given it my all. This lap six is, you know, as far as I'm going to go, I've got clean lap now, so this is the one that's going to count. And get over the line, so I managed to reel in a one minute 48.564, which world time record at this time of doing this is one minute 42 176 i obviously got a 148 so i'm only actually six seconds off the leaderboard time which i'm quite happy with because typically i am you know on average around about eight seconds off the world leaderboard time so that's quite good for me now that has placed me in europe 1292nd out of 4954 drivers putting me in the top 26 percent in the world i'm placed at 2341st out of 9481 drivers putting me in the top 25 percent so basically in the top quarter of the world in terms of drivers so i'm quite happy with that I'd like to be a bit higher obviously but who wouldn't um really really tough drive this car even on daytona i had a few sort of scary moments where i very nearly lost the car even on this particular run where it that was it there actually on that kind of corner as i came around the you know the fast section very nearly lost the car altogether and this daytona track as i said is not particularly one of my favorite tracks so i have a habit of forgetting which variant i'm on and making the odd mistake typically forgetting that section back there and actually going straight into the tire wall or on the section after the finish line I have a habit of not slowing down enough into that first corner and then pushing myself wide so it took me a few laps to get used to this particular track even though i have raced it a lot it's just not one that stays with me so there's the times so as i said before came in 1292nd in europe um 26 percent in europe which wasn't too bad i can live with that and then on the worldwide perspective 2341st out of 9481 other drivers putting me in the top 25 percent so yeah i'm pretty chuffed with that for now and there is all the a uh what do you call it a special reward i think some kind of driver target for actually just competing in this so there's the final results we're going to jump into part two now which is me going to be going into the vintage version of this ford gt so this is the 1966 number two ford gt 40 and mark ii le mans that i'm going to be driving here this is an s785 class vehicle by the way both of these vehicles are spec 
filters, no tuning, no parts. It's as the vehicle comes out the box and as per spec. So this 1966 version feels very high and it feels very loose as well. As I'm coming around these first couple of bends, quite a scary car. This, this is lap two and I'm hoping I can really have a good one here. Gee, God, oh, did you see that? The, the chassis lifted as I went around that corner. That was pretty scary and it just did it again. Whoa. I've got to go easy. I've got to be careful with this car. I'm going to turn this thing over if I'm going into a corner a little bit too quick. So this is the fun part of this course. This is the Le Mans classic circuit. So this one's just nice big straight now. We've got a massive straight. Let's see what we can get out of this. 1966 Ford GT you're absolutely push this thing to the max we've got a long old straight we're probably going to slow down about another couple of mile an hour or so I suspect this thing's only got four gears unlike its modern counterparts so we're up to 193 miles an hour there 194, 5 we get 6 6, yeah we've got 6 go on give me a 7 there we go, we've got seven, an eight, an eight, one nine eight. Can we get two hundred? Come on, give me a two hundred. I think one nine eight is going to be it. We're going to hit the corner now, so that's going to slow us down. Oh, a little bit of a twitch there. Car got a little upset as I went round that little bend. It's quite an unexaggerated bend that one, but some cars don't like it. I'm going to slow right down now for this corner. Real nasty corner. This nice tight right hander lost the back end just a little bit there was easily regained so my rival's time is 358 that I need to beat and I'm probably not going to beat that to be honest I'm probably going to be a, a fair bit off of that I suspect because this again is not one of my favourite tracks and this car is new to me you know, as of today, I've not driven this in Forza Motorsport 7 at all. Nearly lost it again there. Take it easy around there, a little bit of a slide. And as a result, I'm not fully comfortable with this car. It's a bit scary, actually, the chassis lifting off the ground like that. Thought I was going to lose it a couple of times there. And it is a little back-end slidey, this vehicle. It's definitely not as... What's the word? Tight as its 2017 counterpart but then obviously you wouldn't expect that given there's a mass gap of years and technology between them but I do find the 2017 Ford GT quite a challenge to drive as well that chassis moved again big time then that made my heart stop I really want to get a clean lap this time round because with my severe sleep apnea getting around Le Mans is really really tough on me and I think if I get into lap 3 I'm going to struggle to stay awake and I'm probably going to have an accident or something very nearly did there very nearly went sideways off the track I've actually improved 6 seconds on my first run but obviously the first run was cold so there was no kind of you know that initial movement over the line this obviously I've got the benefit of hitting the line with inertia so let's see how I get on over the last corners here very last corner of floor it now we're straight again so we're gonna get okay so we've got 408669 which was 10 seconds off my rival um yeah not I can't say I'm overly chuffed with that that's quite a way off but I wasn't expecting a lot out of myself I did push myself quite hard here to be honest I wasn't really particularly taking it easy in this thing. A few of the corners I did slow down a little bit purely because I felt the car just wasn't going to make it. I actually pushed it through this section and this is where the chassis lifted. I don't know if we're going to see that in the video. No, you don't see that in the video. Yeah, you kind of saw that dip as it went into the corner there. It's like the whole body moved. And they did that a couple of times. There, it lifted off the ground. You see that? So that's quite a scary car to drive this. Maybe if I could tune my own car, I could get a better drive out of it. But I think spec 
it'd be pretty tough for me to get better than that but that was quite you know reasonably fast lap for me so that put me in the world uh, sorry in Europe uh, 1768 out of 4,239 other drivers putting me in the top 42% it's obviously quite low for me typically I'm, I kind of float around the top 30 and below in terms of percentage in the world rankings that puts me 3,117th out of 7,911 drivers so and that puts me in the top 39% so not a brilliant place to be honest but I'll live with it I'm going to run out of time to do this I'll be honest I didn't realise this event was on because I haven't really played a mass amount of Forza Motorsport 7 recently I've been pretty tired so driving is quite challenging for me in Forza particularly things like arcade games it's you know I can manage it a little bit more but in Forza particularly it needs a lot of concentration and I find it sort of wearing me down a bit so my time overall was a massive 21 seconds off of the world leaderboard time so the world leaderboard time for Le Mans Classic and this particular Bounty Hunter Rivals event which is the pacemaker by the way the Valentine's pacemaker this is part two of the Alan Hartman Bounty Hunter experience and that time was a three minutes 47 seconds point five three nine and as I said that left me over 21 seconds off of the pace I nearly lost it there big time as you saw around that corner but I might have got maybe on a perfect run I definitely could reel in those 10 seconds because I had a number of incidents where the car slid but obviously that's dependent on me controlling the car perfectly around the corner and to be honest I initially had a go with this without TCS and STM on and it was a nightmare I had major issues keeping this car on the corner so the two Ford GTs that I've driven in this Rivals event I've actually driven with TCS and STM on purely because I was able to get better times with that configuration if you like me and you love Forza Motorsport Rivals and you like a bit of a challenge feel free to put your times for this particular event or any events that you watch my videos for in the comment section and if the event is still active and I can still race it I typically will go back and try to beat your time if it's better than mine I like a challenge I've got a number of guys on my friends list who are actually you know are better than me at doing these Forza Motorsport rivals they're pretty good drivers and as a result they do drive me to you know get more out of myself and I do actually beat their time sometimes they'll come back and beat them other times you know they'll send me a message and say you yeah, know nice time couldn't quite get there but it was really close other times they'll you know knock three or four seconds off and then I'll just jump back in and have another go in which case obviously I'll make another video for the channel but I love the competition so feel free to join in in the comment fields that'd be great to see what you guys are doing as well please be kind enough to rate the video click the like button if you enjoyed it that'd be fantastic if you're not a subscriber to King Lizard's Game Lounge feel free to click that sub button everyone is welcome and please be kind enough to come back again soon and check out some more of my videos take care keep well keep watching and I'll be back with more Forza Motorsport 7 and other racing goodies in the not too distant future.